guys welcome back to my channel so today uh, we had some bad news so it appears that um, two days prior to that video Hazel came up lame under saddle and um, so I was just at the barn to check it out and as you can see as I was going around um, her front right um, leg is basically the one at fault here so you have my barn manager going around to show me um, basically what she looked like um, lame um, but yeah that seemed to be the result of an abscess so um, I will show you in this video how we can take care of that So the first things first is to get a nice bucket of warm water and I have two here just because it is um, October and it is getting pretty cold. So the big bucket is the one where she's gonna soak her foot into and then the red bucket is the one with just hot water to kind of top it off and um, keep the water uh, basically hot for us. Um, you will also need some Epsom salt, um, just a plain Epsom salt. I got mine at the local um, drugstore, so uh, it's very easy to, to come by and it is not um, that pricey. So that, those are the two ingredients you will basically need to do a soak. So the first thing you will need to do is to pick up um, their hooves and clean them really good. All of them and especially the one that you're going to put into the bucket. There is definitely uh, no point of putting a dirty hoof in the soap um, just because it's going to make it dirty and then it's not going to be very efficient. We're trying to get the Epsom salt to kind of act into the hoof and um, basically help to pull out all the, um, the abscess, the infection. So as you can see here, Hazel is very hesitant on her front leg and she is not really liking me picking up the, that left leg of hers just because she has to put more weight on the right side. So that also confirms that something is going on with the opposite, like the opposite front legs because she has to definitely like shift her weight and um, she is not really liking it. But as you can see, every other uh, foot is pretty much fine to be uh, picked. So there's no issues there, but um, yeah, this is definitely one of the signs that you can look for. So another great sign of um, basically a hoof abscess would be a digital pulse that you would find around the coronary band. So for people that are new or not like familiar with horses, so they basically have the hoof, which is kind of a hard structure made out of keratin. Um, and then just right at the top of the hoof, um, you would have like the coronary band and that's a bit of the equivalent of um, you know the top part of your nail if you will so it's a bit softer and it, it is the link between the normal leg and the actual hoof so that's um, the coronary band so you would find a digital pulse like usually just like maybe a finger or two above the coronary band um, in our case we kind of figured that the abscess would come out by the top of the hoof instead of the bottom it's always better if it comes out by the bottom, but sometimes depending on how the issue is and how the infection is, it is possible that it comes out at the top. So the next step was to put the leg into the little bath that we made. So as you can see, Hazel doesn't really mind. Um, she put her leg straight in it and then um, just kind of stayed relaxed the whole time. And I decided that I would groom her at the same time just to keep her calm and quiet. She really loves grooming, so I don't see why, you know, it would have bothered her. So just to keep her kind of happy and she has to basically soak this hoof for a little bit in there. So um, that's why, you know, it's always good to kind of make them happy. Some, of, some owners give them treats. In my case, she really likes grooming, so we're just going to go with that. So I will let you guys enjoy all the little funny faces that she makes when she gets groomed. Um, she seems really really happy and the point is just to get her like kind of relaxed like I said. 
Um, you really want to put that leg in the bucket um, for as long as maybe 20 minutes. Um, and you can do it once or twice a day, depending. Um, but yeah, in her case, we just, I think I did it twice. That was the second time I actually did it with her. And um, she's doing pretty good. Um, sometimes she does wobble around and move around a little bit just because she likes to um, be groomed at a certain spot. Um, and that's why she kind of moves. But you really have to keep it in this warm water for about 10 to 20 minutes and keep that water warm. Really important. So here I am just uh, realizing that I forgot to put a timer here, um, so I, I think I just deducted about like 10 minutes, um, so I set it off for another 10 minutes just to let me know um, when it's time to remove that puff out of the water. A nice tip is always to have rain boots on just because as you can see she <laughs> she wobbles around and there's a little bit of water splashing everywhere um, yeah it's a bit of a messy process but as long as most of it is in there and that she's standing pretty still it's always good So once the soak is over, um, I have my bar manager here helping me put some poultice on. Um, so this is some animal lintex that we've cut a little strip and we're just applying it to the coronary band just because we have predicted that um, the abscess uh, would blow pretty much by the top of the hoof so there was no point of putting a poultice at the bottom of the hoof at that point. So that's what we did. Um, so we just secured the little poultice bandage with um, duct tape on both sides and then we will secure it with some bed wrap um, all around the hook. So Hazel was good for the most part but um, seems like she was a little bit off balance and really wanted to put that leg down so I had to um, help my bar manager to kind of put the bandage on so I'll just go um, at the front and just grab the leg and then we'll just secure it once again we'll just give it another try So after securing the poultice once more with some more um, duct tape, um, we proceeded with the vet wrapping um, and you can just really go into like a next kind of pattern and just uh, wrap around the whole hoof. You don't want to make it too, too loose um, just because then it's going to fall off and you don't want to make it like too tight especially on the coronary band and on the leg just not to block the blood flow. Um, so it's really like you, you do it as tight as possible on the hoof and then on the actual skin you want to be a little bit more, um, give it a little bit more room. If ever you've done it a little too tight, what I do sometimes is I just cut um, the part of the vet wrap that's actually too tight and then I would secure it with some uh, duct tape on top just to kind of make it a little looser. You want to be able to kind of at least insert like one pinky in there to make sure there's enough room and enough blood flow. So this concludes our uh, vlog for today. I know it was a little bit short. We've been dealing with this abscess um, thing for the past week, week and a half. So um, that's why I didn't post any videos last week. It's just because I had no time to edit. I really had to make sure I was there for my horse and take care of her. Um, and so um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that it was something instructive, that you've learned something. And um, I hope that will help you if ever you have uh, one of the lameness issues or who pops us on your own. I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye-bye.